It's important for non-forensic science practitioners in the criminal justice community to have forensic science training so that they have the underlying knowledge of forensics, which incorporates into all of the other aspects of criminal justice. Forensics training is most needed in the United States uh, in rural locations. Although we do have forensic pathologists in general that are covering these locations, we don't have enough of them. Um, and they often do not have the same resources uh, that they would have if they were in a large city with more economic infrastructure, more taxpayer dollars, etc. So we need more training in order to get more people into rural settings. The National Center on Forensics mission that really has two major prongs, and that is to uh, provide medical legal learning opportunities for medical examiners to serve in underserved rural areas and provide forensic science training to the legal and justice community as well as law enforcement officers uh, throughout the United States, especially those to underserved rural areas. So the grant has three partners along with George Mason University, the National Association of Attorneys General, the American Society for Clinical Pathology, and the Montana Forensic Science Division. The National Institute of Justice has been very, very supportive of all of our grant endeavors. The grant for the National Center on Forensics from NIJ is helping the grantee flourish by giving the opportunity to have the center train medical students in the opportunities that are available in forensic pathology. We've reached out to all the attorney general's offices and the state and local prosecutor's offices around the country to find out what specifically their needs are. And we did a needs assessment about a year and a half ago, and we came up with a variety of topics. So we have done our due diligence to try to find out what the state and locals want. The needs assessment, the focus groups, and the, the uh, surveys that we took to address the training needs of these communities uh, was a basis for the uh, subject areas that we addressed at the training conference. We noticed that the training needs for the medical examiner coroners sometimes overlap but were mostly different from the training needs from the judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement personnel. So uh, a part of the grant, the training was available to all those practitioners, but we also had two tracks, one for medical examiners and coroners to address their needs, and the other for the judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement personnel to address their forensic science and legal training needs. The NCF has created several training opportunities outside of the conference, uh, including creating rotations for pathology residents who are considering or might be interested in forensics uh, to go to forensics laboratories to work. And we specifically chose rural or non-urban uh, locations so they would have that experience in hopes to first of all convince them to do forensics but then secondly to make them realize the importance of doing forensics in a, in a non-urban setting uh, to meet the needs of the population. The grant for National Center of Forensics from the National Institute of Justice provided the grant to promote training and education for rural states in particular with death investigations which is where we came up with a proposal for a coroner liaison. The coroner liaison position essentially boils down to resource management. Uh, the goals of the position are to optimize and standardize death investigations across the state of Montana. We have several very rural or frontier counties in our state that might not know what's available to them as far as resources. They also might not have taken a case recently, and so being able to have a contact that you can call directly and ask questions of when it comes to field investigations specifically, and then medical history that might not require a doctor. So it's one point of contact for everything having to do with death investigations. They don't have to go looking for the information. They just have to have a phone number and I can tell them where to go next as far as a resource. The biggest value in the coroner liaison position is that she helps bridge a gap between investigators um, and the medical professionals at the state crime lab or even local medical providers and hospitals. The coroner liaison helps to mitigate those instances where you might not have the information you need and might not have it readily available where they are able to 
make those contacts, provide that information, or streamline the process and get you the information needed to complete your investigation. The implementation of the coroner liaison position has set an example for other rural states where jurisdictions are varied and resources are thin as a way to connect the entities performing autopsies at medical examiner's offices and death investigation offices in order to better death investigation across the country. At the end of the uh, conference in August, we took a survey of all the conference attendees and we asked them to identify additional training that they would like uh, for the coming year. And so the needs assessment based on that survey will be the basis for the new training that we will provide in 2024. And all this training from the conference and all the new training will be available on the NIJ NCF website via a link to the training. Hopefully the NCF will have a positive impact on the application of justice throughout the United States.